Welcome back to the Track Enthusiast channel. Today we're going to be doing a transmission flush, or I should say drain and fill, multiple drain and fills on the Camaro ZL1 1LE 10L90 transmission. Uh, I'm just going to go through a couple of the supplies that I have uh, that you guys will need if you wanted to do the job, other than jack stands and jacks. Um, there's a special adapter that you guys need. This is about 20 bucks that you can use to fill the pan from the bottom so you don't need to pull the, uh, the drain plug out from the side and deal with all the, the squeezing that's, that's required to get in there with a low profile Allen wrench or eight millimeter Allen wrench. You can just fill the pan from the bottom with this by screwing this adapter into the base and then just pumping uh, with a hand pump through the, through the bottom and you can fill it that way. Um, we have an inch pound, um, al excuse me, an inch pound wrench, torque wrench. Um, because the uh, the settings for the bolts are very low. It's 44 inch pounds for the filter, uh, for the transmission filter itself, and then 80 inch pounds for the uh, for the bolts. Um, so you need something that's kind of weak and light. Um, we also have a 10 millimeter just to break some of the bolts loose, and then we're using this to take them out. There's 16 total bolts um, to be removed. Once the pan is down, um, then you can drain and refill. I'm going to be trying to do three refills. Um, each time you drain, it's not 8.1 quarts like it says online, you guys. It's it's about it's less than six. It's five quarts if you're doing um, just the drain and fill, and about five and a half, five and a quarter if you're going to be doing the filter. So I got six uh, six rounds of three basically here, so we can do three drain and fills, um, and then get this thing as clean as possible. I did want to give you guys a heads up that there is a TSB for all the uh, Camaros. It came out in 2020 saying not to flush your transmission. So do not let the dealerships flush your transmissions because they will shorten the duration uh, or service life of the transmission per Chevrolet. And I'll put that in the, in the video for you guys as well. But we're gonna go ahead and get started. Um, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take the, we're gonna drain the pan. And the little pan bolt is there in the corner. Once you drain that, and that's, uh, you get all the fluid out there. It's just gonna be a very small amount, maybe less than half a quart. Then you're gonna take the bolts off. Let's go ahead and get started. Just to dive into the parts that you guys are gonna be needing, you're gonna need the AC Delco, uh, the Dexron ULV, ultra low viscosity is what that stands for. Um, and you don't wanna, don't differ from that. Make sure you use that. This is the filter for the transmission. Um, now what's unique about this uh, transmission filter, I don't know if it's as unique, but it was unique to me is that you need these special reusable bolts. Um, the, the bolts that come out of the filter are disposable and you have to replace them with these 85 millimeter stretch bolts. So I guess some people do reuse them. I just figured I'd go by the book. Um, there was a gentleman online who posted he used them twice and he measured them when they came out. After using them twice, it stretched from like 85 to 86.2 millimeters or something like that. So it's just, it's gonna affect your, your torque setting. And then since the filter is also, these screws also attach the filter to the transmission, but also the valve body to the transmission, it's probably ideal to get them. Um, the filter, excuse me, the filter was maybe 50 bucks. And these bolts, I think were, I wanna say like 20 or something like that. And you don't need to use all of them. You're just gonna use the two 85 millimeter ones in there. Um, I'll try and list the part numbers for you guys. Let me see if I can find it out here. This is the part number for the bolts. This is the part number for the filter. All right, and you have the AC Delco right underneath the GM part numbers. You might be able to find the cheaper, the TF937. And that's the part number for the fluid, the 10-4107. All right. And then, like I said, you'll just need an, a, a torque wrench that you want in inch pounds. Um, and that's pretty much it, you guys. It's just, it's, it's more tedious than, than difficult. It's just multiple drain and fills. And remember, do not let the dealership flush your transmissions. to remove the drain bolt plug and just drain whatever comes out. And this is what you're going to be using later to level and to fill. Uh, All 
All right, you guys, so I got most of the pan bolts out. I think there's a total of 16. I got 12 out, so I've got all the ones on the sides out, as you can see here. Only the ones in the corners are the ones left to support. And what I'm gonna do next is to just simply reduce or the, the, the tension on these front ones and kind of tilt it downward and then get it to drain into the pan. Um, it's gonna get a little messy, but you know, that's the nature of this beast, so it is what it is. All right, guys, we got the pan off. I'm gonna let it drip. And uh, my current mileage on the car, just for reference, 37,000, maybe 500, right under 500. So I'm doing this a little bit early. Um, uh, obviously, you guys know I track uh, and I have tracked this car, so I'm just trying to do this uh, a little bit early and stay on top of things. Um, this seems a lot simpler than I thought just by watching the videos. Um, everything here is very low tension in terms of the, the torque settings and stuff like that, so it's very easy to take off. Honestly, the main thing is just squeezing underneath the car. It's not very difficult. I'm gonna let this uh, drip for a little bit and then I'm gonna wipe everything down and then get this uh, filter replaced and uh, go ahead and fill it up. Once we get it filled up, I'm gonna, I'm basically gonna take it for a test drive um, just to let everything warm up and uh, we can get the uh, bypass valve to open up. Once we get that by bypass valve, excuse me, to open up, then we'll get more of the fluid from the uh, coolers to flow into the system basically and we can change out more of the fluid. So I think what I'm gonna do is one uh, drain and fill and then I'm gonna drive it and then I'm gonna come back do one drain and then fill and then I'm gonna idle it for like five, 10 minutes and then drain it again, basically. So it'll be a, it'll be a three step process, but uh, we'll get it done and it'll be very clean. All right, you guys, we've got everything drained. I've got everything wiped down. Um, new filter has been installed. We've got new um, 85 millimeter star bolts installed at 44 inch pounds. Um, it's supposed to be 44 inch pounds plus 128 degrees. Um, I just set mine to 46 inch pounds just to make up for that slight difference there. Um, but it's nice and secure. We're going to go ahead and put the pan back on and uh, get this thing filled up. All right, you guys, this is what the pan looks like and what the fluid looks like after 37,000 miles and some track time. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get that pan uh, drained and cleaned up with some brake fluid and wipe down the gasket. This is a reusable gasket, by the way. Um, it's very, very well made, very firm. Um, so yeah, you don't need to worry about replacing that every single time. I'll probably replace it maybe the second or third time I do this. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to show you guys what the fluid looks like and uh, it looks like it was ready to be changed. All right, you guys, I'm going to give you a quick look at what I pulled out of the system here, basically. Um, a lot of the videos that you see online don't get as specific. <laughs> um, I pulled out exactly five, uh, five liters. Um, it's about five and a half quarts, as you can see, almost there. Now, I spilled a little bit on the floor, so I would say it's honestly, it's five and a half exact. Like, exact. So, uh, I'm going to go ahead and put six back into the system, because I am going to level it, basically, here. Um, I don't think half a quart's going to make that big of a deal. Or I might just play it safe and do the five and a half. Um, because I am going to drain and fill this uh, twice. I'll, I'll probably worry about it at the very end. We're putting the extra, the extra half, a, half, a, half a quart in to, to go ahead and level it at the very end. But right now, like I said, I'm just concerned about just kind of flushing the system. We're going to do another couple drain and fills. Um, but just wanted to show you the exact amount here. Okay. Exactly. Let's say five, call it 5.1 liters with the spill or about five and a half quarts. So 8.1 is, is a myth. That's not, that's not accurate. All right, you guys, we got the first drain and fill completely done. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and show you. I went ahead and used the exact uh, five and a half quarts. So we have five empty ones here. I use half on this one. Spin that around, it's 400 out of the 800 uh, ml. Um, I'm trying to match exactly what I took out basically, which is uh, with the spill about five and a half quarts. Um, I went ahead and just wanted to show you guys the adapter. The adapter, I'll put the part number, I think it's DT51190, and it's a uh, Chevrolet part, and it's an adapter for the, the bottom of the pan, so you don't have to worry about going into the side and squeezing and all that stuff. It's so much easier. And you use one of these little hand pumps from uh, Harbor Freight, they're like $7.99, and you can pump the fluid straight in. Just a heads up, you guys, um, you need to shake the fluid before it goes in, um, and then you can go ahead and pump it straight in. I pumped five and a half uh, quarts in. I'm gonna go ahead and take the thing for about five, 10 minute drive, 
come back. Um, and the, the purpose of that is to get the, um, the bypass valve to open up so I can get more of the fluid exchanged through the system so that when I drop the pan again the second time, we're exchanging more dirty fluid. Um, all right, so that's part one. Let's go ahead. All right, you guys, I've done two drain and fills. I think I'm gonna call it quits. I'm tired as hell. And the fluid doesn't look as bad uh, as I maybe initially thought. I've got the car right now right into that range where you can uh, go ahead and level it. So I'm gonna put the, uh, I'm gonna do the uh, routine here. I'm gonna shift through the gears one at a time, each one holding for three seconds. Reverse, neutral, drive. between 167 and 176. We got the final drain and fill done. Um, as you guys saw when I pulled the, uh, the leveling screw out or leveling, uh, call it the leveling screw, yeah, out, um, the, uh, it barely trickled basically, which means I was slightly underfilled. So I went ahead and put another half a quart in, maybe 0.4 quarts in, um, and then put the, uh, the adapter into the standpipe and then drained it basically. Um, it was perfect temperature. It is 176 degrees and you're right next to the cats and the exhaust, so it is pretty hot. Um, so yeah, prepare for that, have some good gloves. Um, all in all, it wasn't a very difficult job, you guys. Um, the one thing I would give people heads up on is just be careful when you're torquing the bolts for the pan because um, I over torqued one of them and uh, one of the pan uh, bolts broke of the 16. So I'm gonna draw that out and have that replaced um, no big deal. It's not leaking even as I'm, you know, idling it and running it basically here, but, uh, I will get that addressed. 